Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we are down in Melbourne, Florida again, and basically we're doing some footer tile, uh, footer pipe work, sealing the foundation here, trying to avoid future problems. Of course, we can never beat Mother Nature. Let's take a look here so you can see. If you notice that block, you can actually see the water lines that came up here from this creek behind me. The storm surge was so powerful that that drainage creek behind the house flooded nearly 20 feet and you can see the water mark on the block where it flooded this basement. This water rose nearly 15 feet from that level back to the creek back here. This is a discharged drainage creek and I'm just going to step back here so you can see how far it actually rose and I mean you can see the level of it there. So it rose, it might have rose 20 feet to come up to this level. And although we can never, <laughs> although we can never beat Mother Nature, we can definitely give the water a place to go on typical rainfalls or a northeaster, as they call it down here in Florida. Um, that's where you get a lot of wind from the northeast and a lot of rain as well. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be trenching the footer, and you can see over here we're trench, beginning to trench the footer. They actually had it sealed. The wall sealed but never put in any pipes but they sealed that wall and what they need is the footer pipe we're going to start at the, the footer pipe is like a french drain and it runs right alongside the footer of the building then it's going to turn and go out under this fence gravity back to that drainage ditch where i showed you the water it will discharge back there this way Okay, so if you're doing it yourself, this is some really good little tips. Within a matter of minutes, you're going to find out, you know, where your footer is. And you can see here, here's the bottom of the footer. This is the bottom of the footer. You see my fingers going underneath the footer. We don't want to dig any deeper than this. We want our footer pipe, our French drain, to sit right alongside of the footer, not below it and not above it. This is solid concrete up to this course of block. This is the footer right here. This is solid concrete. And what this is is somebody's attempt to waterproof. And you can see it's just a paint. It's just a skin. And you can see how easily I pulled that off of there. So it did absolutely nothing. We are going to seal this with liquid rubber. We'll come up to about this level and continue it because it's on a grade. You can see it's at an angle. It'll just follow that natural grade, but we'll come up a couple of inches higher. <clears throat> so you found this out right away within just a few minutes. Your footer pipe is going to sit here, which is below the floor. You can see here's the floor level right here. Let's come across. So it's right here. That's the bottom of the floor. And our footer pipe is going to sit below that. You have to be below the floor in order for your footer pipe to work. So again, coming around the corner, pretty deep over here. We're coming up a rise of about three feet, maybe four. So you can see it's a much deeper excavation here in the corner. Found those things out within a matter of minutes. Next thing we got to think about is our discharge, discharge to daylight. We have to have a gravity fall from the footer level and go out back. So we've, I've chose a path, a lot of tree roots. You can see this tree. It's just matted through here with tree roots. But we'll go under the fence right here and come out on the other side and go as far as we need to to come to daylight. Down here, a lot of tree roots. You can see them. Here's just an example of a tree root. But there's lots of them through here. This is going to be a tough spot. You need your axe, your mattox, whatever you got to do to get through those roots. And again, those roots are going to extend all the way up here. So rather deep excavation as we come from the footer wall, but it catches up and it runs downhill. And the reason I chose there, that's the lowest point as we go out back. Okay, so here's the beginning of the discharge line and you can see, you know, we're pretty deep. We're about knee deep right here. And this is below the footer. So water is going to you know, travel down along the footer and then it'll turn. We'll put a T right here to pick up this small little section here. It'll come right down through the trench. And as long as we stay downhill, downhill flow, 
you can see we've stopped there. It's going to end behind the fence. As long as we've got downhill flow, discharge to daylight, this system should work really good. In addition, we're going to be coming back and they're going to put new gutters up. You can see this one just kind of covered the porch, but the discharge was kind of tacky looking coming over this direction. Put new gutters up, bring the downspout down, and then we'll retrench right on top of our footer pipe, a solid pipe, and attach it again to the solid pipe so that the water does not go back up underneath the floor. Okay, as you dig, you may find an old footer pipe, and that's what this pipe is right here. And the reason we know it is, number one, it's right beside the footer, but as I broke some of the pipe, you can see the perforation, see the holes? And they actually did it correctly. Holes point down into the gravel. You can see the root system that's grown inside here. Impossible to clean such, you know, long neglected footer pipe, but we're gonna take, break that out and lay our new pipe exactly where that one is and come around, comes down along the footer, down to the T to the excavation, I'm sorry, <laughs> to the discharge pipe, and it goes all the way out behind that fence. So what we're doing is we're just using the shovel and busting that old footer pipe out. I know it's dark back there, and I'll have to move out of the way so he's got more room, but it's so brittle, remember, PVC is great, but you see that? That shovel cuts right through that stuff. It's not as strong as you think when people make this assumption about corrugated and uh, thin wall PVC. They're almost identical. In fact, they rate them both at 3,000 pounds crush. That's what the crush rating is on both of them. Okay, so we're pulling out the pipe. You can see you cut it right off. And if he holds it up here, you can see the holes were pointing down. See all the holes? And you see that root system that's grown through there. That's because it is perforated. And there's just no way that a cable can clean that many roots out of a line, especially when it's as fragile as PVC. Okay, let's get a lesson in root cutting. I've already cut this side, and all I'm using is a shovel. And I'm gonna to try to do it with one hand while holding this phone. So bear with me, <laughs> but if you've got a sharp shovel, you can usually chop right through a root. You can see I've got a piece of it, see how it's sticking, and just, if I could use two hands, I could probably go right through it, but you can see the shovel just cuts right through tree roots. Don't be afraid of them. You can easily cut these things with your shovel and continue your trench without a whole lot of upper body work. Okay, so we've got the old footer pipe taken out and we also pulled off the old paint that was on that wall. I realized that was just a paint. It wasn't even a sealant and it peeled right off all the way around. You can see it laying out here. So if you're gonna paint your wall, make sure that it's something that will bond to the cement of your block or your concrete or your wood, whatever it is because paint, as you can see, it pushes off. This is also a great example of, you see people paint their inside walls with uh, lots of different products, I won't name them, but they paint that wall because it says waterproofing paint. Realize that behind this wall, pressure is pushing this direction, and this is gonna come through the block and just push that paint right off the wall. It takes time, sure, but within six months, you've got the same problem that you just pretty much hid you are hiding it by putting the paint on. If you're gonna seal your wall, it needs to be on the exterior. So always remember, water pushes against something, will hold it in place. That's why this paint stayed in place as long as it did. So next, you go ahead and get your garden hose out and you start squirting off that wall. Get as much dirt off as you can. If there's any dirt left, you would go ahead and get your shovel or your brush, whatever's needed, and scrape it clean and rewash it again. This was actually really clean because it was behind that paint. So we're in pretty good shape here. And you can see that water, let's step over here, as it comes off of that footer, you can see it coming down through the trench. So we know we've got gravity coming away from the foundation and it's gonna run all the way out to daylight on the other side of the fence. So you can see that water coming from the foundation and it's just coming right around. <clears throat> it's coming right on out too. Let's see, 
yep you can see it coming out and that's where we're going to discharge to daylight we'll put a little grate or a four a pop-up or something there and it'll flow on out and over to that drainage creek up there so. okay so we're applying our liquid rubber remember if you can see that it says rubber coat number 57 this is a blackjack number 57 there's lots of products out there people put comments about how long it lasts you know what if this lasts 15 or 20 years that's great that's pretty much the life expectancy of any French drain so this is perfect and you can see we're just kind of trying to maintain a line across the top and you can paint over this this stuff bonds to the wall and it doesn't come off like we pulled that paint off it won't come off that same way it really bonds to the to the wall itself so we went ahead and started to lay our easy flow this is four inch perforated pipe surrounded by styrofoam peanuts encased in fabric and this is actually set below the floor we are at the bottom you know the pipe is at the bottom of the footer and as water floods up into the system the pipe picks it up goes through the styrofoam peanuts into the perforation of the pipe and is carried away remember the secret of all this all your labor all your efforts make sure you're below the floor or your system will not function properly so at the end of your pipe we don't want to leave this open the other end I actually poured gravel all around this area so that water could penetrate it. but here's a slab you know, here's the uh, patio porch so I'm just going to put a cap on here these are called end caps and it just snaps in place we'll go ahead and pour some gravel right here so that water could easily come into that area and there we have it we put some gravel there to allow that little six inch section to catch up to the water and we'll backfill you can see just push the pipe down and it goes right down to the bottom of the trench backfill it and we're done so here at the discharge what I do is this is a four inch corrugated pipe and this fitting is a three is a four inch 90 we put a grade on it four inch and I make a slice slide it inside the coupling and then I usually put a couple of set screws in there then I use roofing tape to wrap around the entire uh, coupling to make it watertight although it, we're discharging it doesn't have to be watertight but nice to make it look good and secure water's coming down from the house itself the foundation comes under the fence comes up here and just floods out into the area all done so again this is a window and door flashing tape it's got real sticky rubber on the other side and of course the aluminum foil is just for waterproofing but what a great seal this is super tight and that will never come off of there once that sets so we're all done now we just backfill and clean up and that's it hey this is chuck with apple drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something i guarantee you can do it have a great day